Have you ever applied a LUT that you've downloaded only to find out that your image doesn't look at all like what you expected? Well, that's simply because color grading is not a one-size-fits-all. It's specific to how an image was captured, the exposure level, the contrast ratio, even the creative intent. But with the right approach, color grading can really transform your footage into a high-end production. But let's be honest, DaVinci Resolve can be a little bit intimidating, especially if you're new to it. Well, in this video, I'll show you my process in transforming log footage into a cinematic look. Let's dive right in. First things first, I'm not a professional colorist. Now, I've been in the business for over 20 years and I've colored all my footage, but I'm not a colorist. Colorist is a real specialty real artists and my level of understanding of, of coloring is what I need for, for what I do. Um, and, but I don't pretend to be an expert. There are people that are so good at DaVinci Resolve and coloring. And uh, what I want to show you today is um, hopefully more than just the basics to at least get you going and um, get the results that hopefully you need for your project. So we have our shot in here. It's shot in slow-mo. And this is uh, S-Log footage, or S-Log 3. This is shot with the Sony FX6. Uh, we can now move to the color tab to start coloring. And one of the main hurdle, or one of the main thing to understand in DaVinci Resolve is the use of nodes. And nodes are kind of like layers in Photoshop or any other tools, um, design tools, where you can put different type of effects and adjustment, and then you can create multiple nodes and stack them. Uh, I just want you to have an understanding on how to use nodes. And from there, you'll develop your own uh, workflow, you, you know, what works for you. And um, it's, it, it can be very complex, so we'll start pretty slow and then we'll build up to it just to see how we can use nodes. One of the main things that I want to draw your attention to is this right here says clip, and you can see that you can also do timeline. Um, and so you can apply nodes or effects at the timeline level or at the clip level or even at the group level. But right now, let's just stay with the clip level. So anything basically that we're going to do into this node is going to apply the effect to that particular clip, but to no other clips that we can drag onto our timeline. And when we talk about color grading, we need to understand that there is color grading and then there's color correction. To me, those are two separate things. And the first thing we need to do is correction, color correction. We need to actually turn our footage into what it's supposed to be. Before we go into the grade, which for me, color grading is the um, creative side of color correction or of color grading, and, and that is to create a look for our film or for our video. So color correction, we just correct everything to the right levels, the right colors, and then grading is creating a certain look specific for our project. And so the first thing um, we need to do is, this is S-Log3 footage, and we need to uh, change that color space into what we need to export it to. So in my case, I export everything in Rec. 709. DaVinci gives you a great tool, which is called Color Space Transform. And you can just start typing color and it will uh, show up right here, Color Space Transform. Now, some people don't like using Color Space Transform and I agree to an extent. Color Space Transform for me is the base of correction to get to the right color space. So we're just gonna drag this into our node. And now we have um, the setting for that particular um, effect for the color space transform. Now, some people um, set up their project with all that information so that they don't have to change anything in here. For me, again, as a control freak, I like to manually change what I need to in order to make sure that it is what I want. And so our input color space is what we shot it as, which was Sony S-Log Gamut 3 Cine. And then our input gamut is S-Log 3. So I can just scroll, find S-Log 3. And then um, it's starting to look good, but right now it's using the output color space of the timeline. And like I told you, I'm not sure what my timeline or my, what my project set is set up to uh, because I like to change it here. So instead of saying use timeline, 
I'm actually gonna go pick Rec 709 because that's what I want to export it to. And same with the output gamut. And so we're gonna pick Rec 709. If I can find it right here. And so that is the base of just transforming S-Log into Rec 709. We can also name this node, which is which can be really helpful when you have multiple ones. And so we can do a color space transform or CST. And that way we have that little reference up here. Um, I like to use a node for every kind of step into my process so that if I want to go back, I can just delete a node or whatever and it doesn't affect everything else. It's just that one thing. So color space transform for me is a specific node and I'm going to leave it like this. We also need to, um, let me turn my um, scope on and place them over here. So I normally use two monitors and my scope are open on my other monitor. Uh, but for this video, it's a little tricky. And so I'm just going to put it here in the corner uh, so that we can look at it. But it's very important that when you work in color grading, you use your scope and um, you have to learn how to read your scope for production purposes and definitely for post-production purposes. So now that we have the right color space, now we can look at our scope and we can see um, a few things. So if I look at the waveform here, then I can see that my highlights, I still have room. Um, there is no pure white in here. I have a little bit of a ceiling where I can raise the highlights. And then most importantly, in my shadows, I have a lot of room. So my shadows were recorded pretty high and um, so I don't have any pure black in this image. And uh, I think we need to change that. And you can see that on the histogram as well. Here's my shadow. So again, I have, I have quite a bit of room here and then a little bit of room on the highlights. Um, so that's the first thing we're going to change. So I'm going to create another node and you can either right click and say add node and we're going to create a serial node. Or let me delete that one. You're going to push option S on the Mac and it will just create a serial node. And so again, we can move them wherever we want to. That's just for the visual representation of, of where the nodes are to stay organized. Um, and then again, we can name that one. And like, for example, we can just name that one exposure. And now I'm gonna correct um, this to make sure that we uh, raise the highlights and lower our shadows. So the first thing we're gonna do is come down here to those um, wheels and you can see that we have four. We have an offset, which basically, if I change that, it will move up and down the entire image and keep the same ratio. So um, I typically don't use that unless we get to a place where we're pretty happy and we just want to lower kind of like the overall image, but keep the same ratio. Let me put it back to what it was right there. So. And then the gain is our highlights, the gamma is kind of our midtone, and lift is our shadow. So we can bring our gain up, close, so we don't want to clip. So see if I go here, we can see on my waveform that we're clipping up here and we're clipping on our histogram, right? We can see it here. So we want to adjust that a little bit just so that it stays below clipping. And then we want to stretch our shadows so that we get some pure blacks in there. So we have a little bit more. So we can do a couple of things. We can, we can lower our shadows, which is the lift, and bring it all the way down. And it's starting to look pretty good already. So the moment we get to a flight line, we know we've crushed the blacks and there's no more information into those blacks. So like those shadows here, or even on her, um, are crushed to the point where you can't see the detail on her dress. So we probably wanna bring that just before we crush the black, like somewhere here. Um, and so here I'm pretty happy. We're very close to pure black. We're pretty close to the highlights. The last thing that I would do here as far as color correction is looking at my histogram or as at my waveform in the parade uh, waveform. And we can see that in my highlights, which again should be pure white, so it's that sky over here. Um, pure white is 100% red, 100% green, 100% blue. And we can see here that some blues are missing out of the highlights. Uh, you can see it here. We have a lot, you know, a good amount of red, good amount of green, and we're missing some blue. So we don't have quite uh, pure white. And so that would be one way to 
correct this is to go into our gain, which is our highlights. And we can do a couple things. We can um, grab this middle here. And what I do is um, I click and I hold, and then I look at my scope. And as I drag um, the dot towards the blue, then I stop when I reach the right levels here. So now we know, looking at the parade, that we have about the same level of red, green, and blue. Effectively, what we've done now is just put the image to what it should be. If we had recorded this in Rec. 709, uh, you know, with no picture profile, then this is probably what we would have gotten with the exposure that we, we did. So um, that's that. And so now we can move into the actual color grading um, to create the look that we want. And that is really a unique decisions that you have to make on what you want those shots to look like. I know for me, um, you know, this project is about the Maasai and their living condition and the fact that they live in areas that's very harsh and very difficult to, to live in. And so, um, you know, it's difficult because the Maasai likes to wear very bright um, colors, but I want the message to be a little bit more, um, not dark, uh, but a little bit less hopeful, right? Like less joyful with all those colors. So I don't want to kill the colors, but I think I want to transform this image into something that that says, you know, hot, deserty, uh, dusty, right? So now I'm going to create another node um, that um, we can start working on actual grade. And so, you know, you could move that down if you want, and now you know the top layer is just your corrections and then now we can start the grade that's totally up to you on how you want to stay organized so the first thing that um, i can do here is giving it more of a warmer tone because um, that does speak about dryness desert hot and so i can do i can change the color temperature and just turn that towards the orange towards the warm and um, it gets applied to the whole picture and that works pretty good or I'm going to undo this now we're back right here to normal I can go to my offset and say I want to offset the entire thing towards the orange so again I can grab that dot and just drag it into the orange somewhere here and give it that warmer tone. Um, and then, um, so we can keep um, naming our nodes. So this one could be white balance, for example. And then we'll create a new one. And um, there is, um, so now you can also apply um, all kind of effects here, which I'm not a huge fan. Typically, I don't spend a lot of time adding um, effects, but um, there's this one called contrast pop and so I just search for it and I can just drag it in here and um, and now um, I can kind of change um, how it applies the effect and for me um, again this is like starting to look like a desolate place something that I'm not sure I would be very happy living there um, you know, it just makes it look a lot harsher. So change some of those, maybe somewhere here. So now we can actually go back to our white balance and see that maybe we can still increase uh, the warmth to it. So same thing, I can go back and grab, so I, I, I need to select this one. Sorry, I just moved that. So I need to select my white balance node to make sure that that's what we're changing. And then I can go back to that dot and move it again. So see, if I go towards the green, I'm gonna add more green. If I go towards the red, it's gonna stay in the orange. That's pretty good. If we feel like this is getting too dark and we can see that we're crushing a lot of the blacks here, in theory, you can go back to that exposure node and adjust some of those settings. But this is our correction. 
So if I ever want to go back to what it was, I don't think I want to mess with that particular node. So I would rather create another node um, after my either after the white balance or after um, that contrast pop. So let's put it here, where I can touch again. So I'm going to put contrast here. And here, um, we can adjust those levels again to compensate for kind of what the contrast pop did, like if we feel like it's too much. I can do an offset here where I'm going to leave the ratios the way I want if I like the ratios and just drop everything. That's pretty good. I still feel like my highlights are a little too much. So now I'm going to bring my highlights down a little bit. Yeah. This is better. Good. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully this was valuable. Give me a note in the comment to let me know how you use DaVinci Resolve and how you do your grade and your process. And as always, happy filming.